Welcome back, everybody, to the beautiful convention center in Tampa Bay, Florida. Jay Adams alongside Rob Kahn. It is V3 Fights. Time to get our main card started. No better way to do that than to announce the first fighter to the cage, Smith Amasal. There you see him coming, making his way into the convention center here to a good ovation, good Fair ovation for Smith Amasal. He's 0-3. What else do we know about this fighter in the welterweight division, Rob Khan? Cisneros. Yeah, El Salvador. Yep. The Olympics there. So the judo, his takedown game is going to be outstanding. Um, but Smith is very, very confident. He thinks he can stop the takedown, and he knows he has a distinct advantage on the feet. You know, these are the opportunities. Um, you know, he's an 0-3 fighter. He's looking for a shot. He's looking for someone to, to um, put a good fighter in with him so he can try to turn things around. So if he can turn things around against a guy who, you know, is a, is a judoka, who's a legit judoka, Olympic who's competing level, yeah. Yeah, at the top of the game, and he can stuff those takedowns, that's a great way to turn around your career. Oh, absolutely. And the most dangerous guy is the guy with nothing to lose. Right. There's no pressure on your shoulders. <laughs> exactly. No one in the building is expecting you to win. There's no pressure whatsoever. You come in, you're kind of the, the underdog, and you just quietly do your business. You relax, let your hands go. But you're right. That's the key to this one, boys, stuffing that takedown. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, he was brimming with confidence in the, in the locker room. V3Fights.com, glad you joined us. This one is an incredible card we got in store. Don't forget, we still have the main event, Billy Quarantillo against Eric Reynolds, and the co-main, Rashawn Spencer, Reggie Pena. And there you see Smith Amasal stepping into the cage here in Tampa, Florida. I, I definitely think that this guy was probably one of those fighters we talked about earlier, who was matched really tough early in his career. Right, right, you know, that you, put, you get put in the deep water really early and you start that you can start off 0 3 0 4 but sometimes that can, you can turn things around and you can turn that into a 10 and 4 record he looks pretty stoked and there you see his opponent Franklin Cisneros Franklin Amadeo Cisneros Duarte born December 21st 1983 in San Salvador and he is indeed a Salvadoran judoka uh, he has fought some really really tough people in judo and as you were saying, the 2007 Pan American Games in Rio de Janeiro, this guy has has been on the ground with some of the best the world has to offer. His judo is legit, his world-class judo, but he definitely, his judo game is focused more on the throws. His nawaza, as they call it, judo, or ground fighting end, uh, he doesn't quite focus as much on that, but still, at that level, he's still gonna be quite confident on the ground regardless. And who does he look like? Oh my gosh, what's his name? Back from back in the day. Uh, Hoist uh, Gracie's arch nemesis oh, came in with a cross. Chemo, Miss Chemo. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. He's missing the cross. Oh my gosh, that's all he's missing is the cross. <laughs> Truck tells us the crusher from Bugs Bunny. And you know what? He does. He does. That's a good call. That's a good he call. does. <laughs> Let's see if one of the teeth is missing, because that was one of the things with the crusher. He was missing that front tooth. <laughs> <laughs> but boy, he is a chemo. Look at that. I'll tell you, you know, it's cool. You, you, with a guy like with Franklin, you can see those uh, dynamic throws sometimes that are just, yes. you know, showstoppers. Yes. You see the Beijing tattoo on his arm from the Olympics. And that could be what we're in store for tonight. Let's take a look at how they match up on paper. Cisneros, 33 years old, 5'7", and as we were saying earlier, making his debut here tonight, giving away some reach to Smith Amsell, a three-inch reach difference. Let's see uh, what happens here in this fight. It's going to be a great one. Let's get it started. Chris? Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout takes place in the V3 Fights welterweight division and is presented to you by 2001, the number one in club in Tampa, 15 years running. This bout is scheduled for three, five minute rounds in the V3 welterweight division. And now, let's meet our fighters. Make his way 
Adelaide Alliance MMA Blue Corner. Standing 5 feet 11 inches tall, he weighed in 167.8 pounds. Tonight he brings into the cage a record of one win and four defeats. Representing Knockout Community and fighting out of West Palm Beach, Florida. Please welcome Smith, the bad guy, on his arm. And uh, his opponent fighting out of the Alliance MMA Red Corner. Standing five feet eight inches tall, he weighed in at 178 pounds. Tonight, he's making his professional debut. Representing Top Brother and fighting out of Zephyr Hills, Florida. Please welcome Franklin Cisnero. And when the cage door closes, your referee in charge, Andrew Glenn. And one quick reminder, ladies and gentlemen, no flash photography, please. All right. We are going to have three five-minute rounds here, our first professional fight of the night. Five-minute rounds between these two welterweights, Smith Amasal fighting out of the blue corner in the black trunks with white and blue trim. Franklin Cisneros fighting out of the red corner with the black, board, uh, black trunks and scheduled for three five-minute rounds. This one's going to be a great scrap classic. It looks, at least at least on paper, looks like the classic stand-up versus grappler fight. I agree. No touch of the gloves there. Do you see that? I think the uh, that three-inch reach advantage is going to be big in this fight. Oh, Rob's making the call. Smith has heavy hands. Don't let that 0-3 record fool you. This dude is jacked, and he can throw. Yeah, he's, he's doing the right thing right now. He's not committing to anything. He's not stepping forward too aggressively. He's letting Franklin come to him. Cisneros, oh, catches the left coming in. And Cisneros wants he to get a hold. Him. Yeah, <laughs> came off the ground and caught him with a beautiful right hand counter. You know, it, it's great to be a judoka, but you need to set up the takedown. You know, this is not like you got the gi on and you're grabbing on, you know, and you're, you're able to pull your opponent on. You got to somehow close the distance. Yeah, so Frank's leaving his chin up way too high right now when he's when he's throwing those kicks. Yeah, his left hand is way down, too. Chin is up and hands are down. you got to get those hands up. Wow, Amasal looks strong, too. That's what he needed. Yes. Oh, nice. Getting a little wild with his punches. Oh, oh nasty wow. right hand. That one stunned him. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, the one, the one thing Frank has in his back pocket, though, is he can take chances on the feet without worrying about being taken down. Right, good point, good point. There's no threat there. He can constantly, you know, be aggressive, take shots, and he's not worried about a takedown at all. This is where he wants him, up against the cage. Now he can get a hold, get the underhooks, and go to work. This, this overhook right here is very dangerous for, for Smith. This is what he's looking for. Yeah, this is Frank. this is what scenario. So he was trying to close the distance without getting tagged. Yeah, Frank wants to take him for a ride right here. This will be fun to but watch. Smith's doing a good job, leaning on the cage, keeping the weight back, not giving Frank the chance. Oh, nice knee. Nice knee. Uh, see now he's tactically, I think, making a mistake. He's trying to turn this into a slugfest. Something to prove. Maybe someone somewhere along the line said oh. he couldn't stand and trade with Amasal. And he wanted to prove differently. Oh, nice knees to the body there. Man, and all, all the fights tonight, everybody's been working the body really well. Yeah, oh. I've been mixing it up nice. Uh oh, oh. Cisneros got rocked on that last three, knee. Three knees right to yeah. the face. Yeah, that last one caught him too. But now, now we're in Frank's world. He's looking for that throw. It's an overhook throw that we've been seeing all night. Welt beginning to develop behind the right cap of Cisneros. I'm not sure if he was tagged or and you know, maybe from an earlier fight. As Frank is trying to get these takedowns, he's taking a lot of punishment, which is really going to affect his ability to, to uh, perform. You, know, you get to a point where you just can't perform the way you, you want to because of the punishment you take. Yeah, it's funny. You know, your brain's telling you one thing, and uh, your body's not doing it. 
Oh, you know, he's got a nice cut over the eye. Bad, bad, bad place. Bad spot. <laughs> yeah. We got a great cut man here tonight, though. Great professional fight card. They have a professional cut man flown in. A little back spinning back fist from Cisneros. He's got a big clubbing right hand, oh. but he's actually caught Smith a couple times with. It's so unorthodox. I think Smith's not used to it. <laughs> yeah, right. But he's doing work with those knees. Yeah, he is. He's got a great clinch. Yeah, right oh, there. Oh, man. look at that. Nasty. Just really, really doing damage for later in the fight. Yep. No, that'll pile, it'll pile up. Final minute of the opener here in Tampa Bay, Florida V3 fights. Jay Adams alongside Rob Kahn. Glad you joined us. This is a welterweight matchup. Great. Smith Amasal on top now. Great takedown defense from Smith. Yeah. Doing a really good job. That guy's an Olympic level judoka, and he's having trouble taking yeah. him down. You can see Franklin changing levels, but he just can't do anything with it. Cut now. Blood starting to stream into the eyes of Franklin Cisneros, at least the right eye from my angle. Oh, my, look at him. Let those hands go. Yeah, but you could see Smith's patient in there. He's calm. He's covering up. None of those really did any damage. And now with the hair down, looks even more like chemo. Yeah. All you need now is Hoist Gracie pulling a big <laughs> chunk of hair out of the back of that head like in the old days. Now he's, Smith is finding his rhythm here. Oh, he's, Frank's hurt. Yeah. He's also a little bit gassed, Rob. Oh! oh big knee. Oh! Big knee. Oh, great way to finish the round. I, would, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if Frank might not come out for the next round. It's a nasty gash. It's a nasty gash. Yeah. This, this is... One of those types of fights when you're going against a heavy hitter like Smith, that you say, okay, I wanted to give MMA a shot because I'm, you know, world class judo player. I gave, I gave it a shot. I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. You know well, what I mean? You know, there was, a, there was an old expression, you know, in jiu-jitsu, when the fight starts, you're a black belt. You get punched in the face, you become a brown belt. <laughs> punched again, you're a purple belt. <laughs> punched again, you're a blue belt. <laughs> so true. So true. What did Tyson say? Every, everybody has a plan until they step in the ring and yeah, hit the face. <laughs> get hit in the face. Beautiful. Here's the action from the opener. One, two, beautiful, one, two, beautiful knee. Those knees really did work. They opened up the cut. They great body work with them. I mean, just a clinic with the knees right now. Just punishing, punishing them. Cisneros. And Cisneros and will answer the bell. And I'm telling you, those knees are to the body. You're going to start seeing it now. You know, interesting round to score. I got to score it, you know, for Smith, the first one, just yeah. based on damage, obviously. But, you know, it, it, it's a close round because Cisneros was pressing the action, and he was going for the takedowns. Never got the takedown. That's the thing. It's effective aggression. And there was effective it. aggression. It was so, aggression, but it wasn't effective. Yeah, they just scored that first one for Smith. And now they're slipperier. He's right. more tired. That takedown's going to be harder and harder. If there was a time to say I'm good, it would have been right at the end of that first round. Because <laughs> now it could be punishment time. Smith is moving well. He knows he's he knows he's got the lead. Right. He's chipping away now. He weathered the storm. Was able to stuff the takedown. That's probably the big relief. Mentally too. He's yeah. got that hurdle over. That's you know? right. That's the big relief. He can't take me down. He knows he can stop it. Good feeling. I tell you, boy, more and more of these guys got the takedown defense. These guys know how to stuff. You know, you watch uh, T. Wood oh, with yeah. Damien. Amazing. Whoa, 17 attempts, stuffed. Amazing. And these guys, you know, they're they're learning it. I can remember the very f the first time I saw someone really effective with the takedown defense was um, Forrest Griffin with Tito Ortiz. They're the really, really that you know kind of sprawl to the ground where you throw yourself out. And then at the end of the fight, he did it like four times in a row in front of Tito. Like, kind of, he's, he's goofy. He's a goofy guy. He's just so happy. And Tito's like, hey, yeah, yeah, I get it. I got it. You stuffed my takedown, you know. Chuck Liddell was kind of the innovator of that in MMA. You know, the kind of sprawl that and brawl. Sprawl and brawl. Yeah, throwing yourself out. It's, it's awesome. Still working those knees. Smith is just chipping away with those knees. The ref's looking to break them up maybe here. Lack of action. Ref, yeah, taking a close look. No warning oh. yet. Wow. Frank almost made a big mistake. Almost gave up his back there. You're surprised that, that Smith even wants to clinch at all. There's I, really 
You know what I mean? No reason to do it. I was I was gonna say I'm thinking he's might get, getting a little too comfortable because he's had right. some success, but right. only takes one shift of the weight for you to go airborne. <laughs> go for a little flight. Ah, like you said. Look at that. Wow. Wow, this is not good. Stuffed it. Those shots are landing heavy. He's got heavy hands. Cisneros head snapping back into the cage here. Plenty of time for Smith to work it. Two and a half minutes left in round number two. And you know, typically judo guys good on the ground, but they're so, you know, like wrestlers, they're much better on top. They don't get the chance to spend that, that time on the bottom. Yeah, hence the, the critical nature, the critical importance of studying jujitsu. And you'll never toot your own horn, so I'll, I'll toot it for you, Rob Khan, one of the best practitioners in the country. The first American to receive a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu from none other than Mr. Hoist Gracie. Uh, oh. Just, I always stay on the best terms I can with Rob Kahn. Smith, if Smith steps up his right leg, just steps it up 90 degree angle, he could pass this, pass this half guard and put Frank in a lot of trouble. What should Frank be doing right now? He's, he's, he's kind of static. Frank's got to get that bottom leg out. He's got to use his right elbow create a little space, get that right leg out, and get back to a guard position where he can at least stop the elbows, create some ability to defend the space. He's not controlling the distance in the half guard. And he's, he's turning, taking, yeah, taking he's turning the wrong way. He needs to turn into, there he goes. Now he should be bringing that bottom leg through and going back to a guard position. Keeps him between the legs. In fairness to him, it is his, it is his debut. It's his first time under the bright lights in an MMA cage, and he's in with a really, really heavy-handed striker who has nothing to lose, and he's fighting that way. He's, he's very relaxed. And you could just tell the confidence and the momentum is completely swung to Smith. Oh, he's taking some hard shots. Just yes. looking at this closely. Yeah, Cisneros taking the shots. The, the, the good news is the blood has not, uh, the cut has not reopened, no more blood in the eye. So that's one. Let one thing not to worry about for Cisneros, at least currently. Yeah, the cut man did a great job. Man. Yeah, because it was it was nasty when it, when he first got gouged. It's in, and it's in the worst spot. Nice work oh, with his knees, freeing up that, that arm. Very nice. But again, if he steps up that right leg, he's already he'd be able to pass this half guard and be in a much more dominant position. Now Frank worked his way back to guard. Yeah, you know, and, and, and Smith had the, uh, he could have gone side control if he wanted to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he passed up a couple good opportunities there. Uh, down to 20 seconds here in the second round, another smith Amasal round. And Cisneros is going to have to go back to the drawing board. And uh, I don't know what you're Frank's telling him if you're his, if you're his uh, cornerman. Yeah, he's, Frank's. Frank's, uh, he's got to climb his legs up and take a shot right now. The 10 second bell's there. Take a shot at an arm bar. Take a shot at the triangle. You got nothing to lose at this point. And, you know, arguably a 10 8 round for Smith Amasal with just some brutal damage and never once being in remotely being in trouble in round number two. Uh, and just, just beating up Cisneros. Just beating him up. Yeah, he is. And you know Smith wants to, wants to finish this. He doesn't just want to win a decision no. here. And, you know, you, this is what you mentioned before this fight started. You said he was in w with some really tough competition because the question that's begged here in between round number two and three, the question that's begged is, who the heck did, did he fight? Because how is this guy 0-3? Yeah, exactly. Look at him beating up a judoka, a world-class judo player, right. and this guy's handling him. Who the heck did he fight to go over three? 100 percent. Like you said, they threw him to the wolves, Rob. They threw him to the wolves early. Yeah. And you can see Smith has just ton of talent, ton of talent, but he does have some holes in his game. I, you know, there's a couple holes in the ground game that, that he could improve where he would be a monster. I would love He's to see you get a hold of him. Yeah, I'd love to see you get a hold of him, Rob. I would love to see him grab into your school, I go mean, into your school. That would be amazing. <laughs> Round number three, Smith Amasal in the blue corner. Franklin Cisneros, we have it unofficially at least 2018 on our unofficial scorecard. Frank's got to use those punches to set up his clinch. He's just whipping shots out there. He's just whipping shots out there instead of uh, using the punches to set up an effective clinch where he can get the takedown and get on top where he feels most comfortable. 
Yeah, so we were mentioned earlier, setting up the takedown. This is, you know, it's it's not like judo, where you're just kind of, you have so much stuff to grab, so much loose, loose clothing all over the place, you know? I love the look Smith's giving him. He's, he's head faints. He's giving him different looks, changing his rhythms. Now he's obviously in the dominant position. I think this is going to get stopped here. He's not intelligently defending. I was surprised after he shot that single that he didn't spring back up. As soon as Smith had got that leg out of there, he should have been getting out of dodge. Instead, he just kind of turtled up. See, these are the little things I'm talking about. Smith should not have let him get back to a half guard that easily. Now he's made his job much harder to finish this. This must be so frustrating for you because I've seen you in the cage and you're five, six, seven steps ahead of your opponent. So you're like, you're seeing everything. You want to just scream, no! Well, I definitely don't want to get punched by Smith, though. I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah. I don't care how dark your belt is, man. You get punched by one of those when, like you said, you're going down to brown belt. Like, but I'll tell you, let's give some props to Cisneros right now oh, for hanging in there, man. What a warrior. You want a warrior. He's been getting hit with everything. Yeah, and he's he has not shown any sign of let up. He's still going for submissions. Look at he was going for the arm right there. He is he is dead game, that's for sure. And you know, somebody who made his way to the Olympics has to be. Right. I mean, that that right. level of of toughness to yeah. get to that level. Yeah, he's got mental toughness. Absolutely. He's, yep. He's not gonna break. You looked at him in the corner in between rounds one and two, and there was not one ounce of fear or resignation in his face. It was focus. He was focused and you know He just doesn't didn't execute the game plan. Right. Or uh, to Smith's credit, he he stopped stopped. Stopped it from the happening. Game, game plan, yeah. He stopped it. He stopped the takedown pretty easily too that was surprising that he didn't get one single take right down. right I mean, look how easy he shucked that single leg earlier in the round it was just like almost just stepped right out of it well and i mean he's also he's taken 10 minutes of, of brutal body work too so that's right. definitely sapped some of his energy right yeah that may have been cisneros last shot I don't know if he'll even get back to his feet in the final two minutes here no. of the fight, whether he'll even get back to his feet or not. But if he does, I don't know if he has another shot in him. Yeah, I agree. What would you do here if you're Cisneros? What's the? You got to use your left hand. Get get the underhook to the to the other to uh, to Smith's right side and start trying to get out the back door. I mean, that's first and foremost. If he doesn't get the underhook, he's not getting out of this position. He needs that uh, left-handed underhook right now. And now Smith trapping Cisneros' right hand. Right, he has oh, no he's, defense. He's a, he's no defense. Minute and a half to go. Plenty of time for Smith to try to finish this. Yeah, see, he, he's using that left hand to block the punches, but it's eliminating his chance to getting out. Right. You know, second, or he should be trying to get back to a guard position. But against the cage like that, it's hard. Rath keeping a very close eye on the action now. He's leaned in a couple times. I almost thought he was getting ready to end this thing ticking down to the final minute of the fight here it's been all Smith Amasal Franklin Cisneros has just had no answer for the striking machine that Smith Amasal is the ref is giving him every opportunity but I mean he's not really defending right and smartly, Smith Amasal is keeping busy when he sees the ref lean in he lets the hands go yes he's not gonna stand him up while he's striking He's warning Cisneros right now, the ref is. Um, he needs to see something. Smith's grabbing the cage. Oh, he let it go, okay. See, again, that leg, just step up that leg to 90 degrees and you make give yourself such an easy opportunity to pass the half guard. Two warnings now from the ref saying, I need to see something. But uh, odds are, Smith, we'll go the distance. Smith actually has a triangle opportunity here. If it slips that bottom foot out, he can actually jump into a triangle here, but I think he's a little too beat up at this point. Yep. To see that opportunity. Cisneros? Yeah. 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 Great fight. Great showing there for Smith. Smith Amasal in against one of the best ground guys out there and made it look easy. Wow. What a fight for Smith Amasal. Man, Smith doesn't have an ounce of body fat on him. I know. I used to look like that. Never. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, bush shredded, bush shredded. See, I can get my abs like that, but I can't keep the arms. 
<laughs> I don't know how, you know what I'm saying? I can't, I can get, I can get all skinny. I can get marathon runner, no problem. But I can't keep the, can't keep the arms. I'm either fat and thick or I'm, or I'm marathon runner. Those are my two options. Now, what country is uh, Smith from? I'm trying to see where that's from. I'll find out. I couldn't quite make out the flag. No, I'm not good at flags. Not me either. I'm ugly American. No, it went, no, it went the distance. Fight went. So there you are getting a great look at Smith Amasal with probably the 30-27, maybe 30-26 win. Depends on the judges, how they uh, score the damage, uh, which, which was pretty substantial. Definitely a shutout. Definitely a shutout. And um, oh, I feel bad for Cisnados. He's pretty emotional over there. It's uh, hanging his head. Nothing to hang his head about, man. Tough, yeah. tough kid. A lot of guys would have quit in between rounds one or two. And he did not do that. Yeah. Well, let's make this one official. I think Christopher James is ready to rock and roll. Let's rock and roll, my brother. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action inside the V3 cage, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges see the belt exactly the same at 30 to 27. For your winner, by unanimous decision. Smith, the bad guy, Alijah. It's unbelievable that they, this kid is 0-3. <laughs> it really does beg the question, doesn't it? Who the heck did he fuck? I mean, I mean, we're going to have to get on to SureDog and, and see who those, the those, three, those three studs were. Absolutely. Yep. Well, folks, coming up next, we have a couple of great ones for you. David Mundell will be stepping into the cage to fight Mike Lombardo. Don't forget that main event is still coming. Billy Quarantilo against Eric Reynolds and much, much more all coming your way from the convention center in beautiful Tampa Bay, Florida. There you see Smith Amasal getting his hands raised. Oh, here. Rocks that kick, throws a nice jab right down the pipe. Use a great, great, great job clearing the arm with the knee. Just chipping away, chipping away with those big shots. Never in danger at all in this fight, Smith. Just totally 